Hi everyone, welcome back on my channel, or if you've never watched a video before, welcome! My name is Mero and today I will show you how I make 4 small landscape paintings with the medium gouache. I will also give you some tips and tricks. Before we're going to start, we will need essentials. I use a watercolor journal that I bought at my local art store. I am pretty sure you can also get it online. I use gouache from two multiple brands, Winter and Newton and Royal Talents. I am not sure how to pronounce the name of that last brand, but I think the quality is overall really good. It also works great for beginners. Let's start! You will also need a color palette or something else like a plate for mixing and blending colors. It can be helpful to test some colors on a blank sheet to see how the colors will blend and how they look next to each other. This is especially helpful if you work with both warm and cold colors. Warm colors are usually red, orange and yellow. Cold co colors are green and blue. I start with the first layer now, also known as the background. I mix two different colors for the sky. I started experimenting with gouache a couple of months ago. It's basically a medium that's in between watercolors and acrylics. It's not transparent like watercolor. You can paint a lot of layers on top of each other. This is especially helpful if you wish to cover up mistakes. Once the paint has dried on your palette, you can easily re-wet it again by adding some water. So even though gouache is more expensive than acrylics, you can reuse paint most of the time. As you can see, I mix a green and warm yellow shade for the ground. In the beginning, you shouldn't worry too much about making mistakes or blending too much. We will add more layers over time. For the second mini painting, I start with a brown sienna color. By the way, I use quite a big brush for the first layer. You will need a smaller brush for the finer work, like the details. In this painting, we will only see the sky, so I'm not going to focus on other colors. Although I use reference pictures for my paintings, I will always switch up or change a couple of things. I am still experimenting with gouache and I feel like there's still a lot that I have to learn. One thing that's important is that you have to learn how colors work in general. The trick of my small gouache paintings is that I use the same colors for each of them. In that way, although the paintings look different, they match. While I am waiting for that piece to dry, I am going to start with the painting on the next page. I added a lilac purplish shade for the sky and I worked towards the top with the same brush. I added washi tape to make sure that we will have clean borders around the paintings at the end. You could also use masking tape of course, but I didn't have that around the time that I was filming this video. Washi tape works great as well, just make sure that you do not use tape that will destroy your paper. That would be a shame for your artworks. You can prevent this from happening by testing the tape on a sheet of paper beforehand. For the part below, I add different shades of blue, green and purple on the paper and I carefully blend it together. For the last painting, I use pastel colors. I mix a light blue shade with purple. Now I add an orange yellow shade. Just because you have both warm and cool colors doesn't mean you cannot use them together. Let's move on to the second layer. Make sure that the paint has dried completely. Luckily, gouache paint dries pretty quickly. With the top of my brush, I draw a cloud shape. If you look at the sky, you will notice that cloud shapes never look quite the same. Good news, this means that you cannot mess up clouds. In this video, the clouds that I will be painting do not look super realistic, but they do look fluffy and that's also important, right? 
for my clouds I usually add three layers. The first layer is a light shade and on top of that I add darker colors. You should blend this a little bit to soften the look of it. One thing that you should know about painting landscapes is that everything that's far away should have less details or is more muted. With the same brown shade that I used before, I am painting the skyline. You can look at reference pictures for this, but you can also just go with the flow and see where it takes you. Once you have done this, you can color in the shape of the skyline with the same brush. For the second layer of this painting, I am using the same blue brush. I am going to paint clouds but in a different way. I am starting with a lighter shade again but with the brush I basically dab the paint strokes on the paper. This technique will add more structure and depth to your paintings instead of one exact color. If you add darker shades on top it will also be easier to blend the colors since you don't have to do it very neatly. There is not a wrong way to do this. I usually do have an idea when I start painting, but eventually I will always change a couple of things because they didn't work out the way I wanted them to be. That's perfectly okay. Do you also notice how my nail polish matches the background color? I just saw that and I didn't even realize it while I was filming this video. Okay, move on. As you can see, the brown sienna color returns once again. One thing that I'm still struggling with is how much paint I use. I would like to use only the minimum for each painting, but I especially use so much white paint. It's like I use one tube each week. If you have any tips for me to use less paint in the journal entry, please let me know. I paint a white circle. This is going to be the moon. I just thought it would make the painting more interesting. I add some dots of color to the circle and after that we can move on to the next painting. For this one, I am adding a couple of purple and yellow lines. I do this to give the painting more body. We're going to cover up most of it later. I decided that I didn't really like the pastel colors that I used for my last small painting. So that's why I blend three other colors now. See, that's the nice thing about gouache. If you dislike the result of something, you can easily fix it once the paint has dried. I also thought that these colors would look better paired with my other paintings. I usually blend colors while the paint is still a little bit wet. Especially in the beginning you have to work fast with your brush. Otherwise the paint dries pretty quickly. It can be really interesting to test these colors beforehand and see whether they look good together or not. Since we have painted a couple of layers now, it's time to create more details. I'm using a smaller brush for this. Always remember that everything that you see up close should have more details. To make something look more realistic in a painting, it's usually all about knowing where the light comes from. That's how you know where to add shadows and highlights. In this painting, I do not add a lot of details, but what I'm currently experimenting with is adding details with colored pencils. You can easily add more structure and shadows with them and they are pretty cheap as well. So you should definitely check that out and get some colored pencils. Or perhaps you can steal them from your sibling if you don't have any. That's also an option. Working on a couple of small paintings at the same time is especially nice because you don't have to wait until something dries. You can just continue working all the time. As you have probably noticed, I started painting the water lilies. For 
for this last one, I am painting the skyline of a random city. I am using a smaller paintbrush for this and a black wash paint. When we're almost finished, I usually take the time to look at my paintings one more time to see where I still need more details. It's definitely still necessary to add a couple of flowers here. I do this by carefully blending white with yellow and red brush strokes. And of course, the flowers in the background should be smaller and have less details. Finally, it's time to remove the washi tape. Do this carefully so you won't destroy your paper. I hope that you enjoyed watching this video and if you have any questions about my art supplies or gouache, please leave them behind in the comments below. I also share all of my art journal spreads online on Instagram, so if you are interested, you could definitely check that out. Hope to see you soon in the next video. Bye bye!